So this one's going to be a little bit more difficult because it's not tutorial. Right. So, and we're in the hardest difficulty. Right. Deeper well, that's in how the as we went deeper, the uneasiness filled us. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. Until so finally, yeah, here you can we already are. see the empty spaces in our standing uh, arrangements. Yeah. What do you think? I redecorated. Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Now it's got like a kingdom thing going on. Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Good, good. You're rip raring to go. Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Well, okay, then, let's get the show on the road. Girls, Everyone, please girls, find your assigned girls. seats. So the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal. Deadly riddle, yada yada. Flash trial. Alright. Set skills. Set what? skills, yeah, we'll want to We got her skill, or one of them. Algorithm. Increase the speed of memorizing a statement. Effective during the non-stop debate. Okay. And Melodious voice is already equipped, it looks. Yep. So... Look through some more truth bullets. We have the account, file. Sakura's account. Locker room dumbbell. Mondo's account. Card reader. Main hall. Ebooks. Broken need pan books. Genocide Jack Cares file. AOE's account. Hina. Hina's account. Boys locker room carpet. Two locker room posters have been switched. Chihiro's handbook was not found. Uh, she was bounded and using the electrical uh, extension cord. Disdain disappeared. Library desk lamp was not plugged in. And she saw her at nighttime. Alright. With a blue duffel bag. Right. Which disappeared. Right. Okay. Well, let's start this class drop. Alright. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But, if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. The dumbbell. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Which, in all accounts, should be the dumbbell. Right. Locker room nightmare. Right. Do you remember how this worked? Triangle to shoot. It appears it was a head wound. Right. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? Oh. I think you have some proof that contradicts what I said. That was a contradiction as much as an agreement. Right. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was. According to the Monokuma file, what kind of blunt instrument? I bet it was an iron pipe. That's uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. interesting. You might have to use the ability to slow things down. Like the least square. It's R1. You just speed forward until that one moves more down the shoot it. Mm. It appears According to the Monokuma file, what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. There we go. Barely got it, but I did. I don't think that's how that power is supposed to work. You gotta right. hold it while shooting. Mm, that's Can we what I tried. That the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime. It was covered in blood, and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned. There's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Yay! That's so creepy! That's what you have to do in an investigation. Get over it. If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, 
I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. What? For real? He's gonna throw out the inside jack thing. Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Which is only said this entire time. Right. See, he's determined that it's Genocide Jack, but he hasn't determined who Genocide Jack is. He hasn't led to any clues about who he thought Genocide Jack is, other than the fact that he is determined that it is Genocide Jack. Because of the case file. A new element has been added to non-stop debate. Really? Okay, more tutorial. Lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines, so think of them as obstacles in your debate. It's a way to keep this white noise from getting in your way. Press the X button to attach the silencer, which can shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual or mark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease. Okay, but your action typically says a gentle white noise won't appear. Are the most difficult though. In which case, you can forget about the silencer and just focus on the situation in front of you. Well, then good luck and have fun. It's basically like remarks that don't, that aren't useful at all in the situation. You just press X to get rid of them and then shoot up the actual. Right. Pretty standard, actually. You'll get used to it really quickly. I did. The culprit is genocide, Jack. See, it's that. Sure. Okay. Case closed. You get rid of them by shooting them. It gives you. It even gives you seconds on the clock. In case you're running out of time. What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. Nice. No, it's wrong. Yeah, but no one else would have seen that file except for us two. Yeah, but if we have the file, then we can explain it. But we don't. We weren't allowed to take it out. Yeah, but we can explain it. Right. They'll just have to believe us. If they don't, we're screwed. I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. But wouldn't Byakula want us to know about that file and bring it up in the trial? What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. But, in fact, there are three. Not two. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Food lust. Ah, uh, no. It's actually bloodlust. But more important is the other characteristic, and it's something that has never been made public. Like, never made public? What the hell is crucifixion it? Crucifixion type pose. Thing yeah, they got going. Using scissors. But Why don't specifically you the tell pose them? is what they're Right. The characteristic. How the victim was positioned. Yeah. I got it. Apparently, in every genocide Jack case. The killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. Because the pictures. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real genocide jack no fucking way but it's not you're saying genocide jack is one of us yes in fact it's toko well what? he just straight up admits it genocide jack's true identity is toko Fukawa. Right. What? Hey. well now you okay. know who he's pointing Wait, the finger to all right toko has like Latophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this gonna be so complicated? Doesn't seem like a riddle in a way, but it feels like you can just about see it. Genocide Jack is Toko, but isn't Toko. What does it mean? Hangman Gambit? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, 
Uh, hold on. H I in the middle of it. Seems like a lot of S's and N's and P's are coming up. C. No, not a C. No, okay. A. Oh, um, no, no. It's not C. Not. Try C. Okay. You just didn't do it fast enough, I guess. Z? She's. She's. She's Theo? Now I understand. Hi, though. Not familiar with the term? Is it because Genocide Jack no, has a split personality? No, I wasn't familiar with that term, no. It must be a medical term. Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. It could have been personality. Right. Although that is a long word. They thought that the suspect or might split. Have... Would have been easier to remember than... Associative identity disorder. Is that I don't even remember what word Shizo. it was. Shizo? I would not have oh, guessed okay. that. Okay. But still, go and say that about Ms. Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. One thing that shows Toko could have had a split personality has to do with her behavior. Her behavior changed. Yep, that definitely shows split personality. You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... I'm fine, I'm fine. Who is that in their body? Hey, are you dead? She was in her head real hard when she fainted. Back, top, inning, and bottom. A sea of truth and love of lies. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Domingo assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? I'll let Genocide Jack have control. I'll just drive out the killer, drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. How? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... Couldn't keep our promise. Don't worry, never again. 
Ah, yeah. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promise. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that. But you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. But, but... Okay, well this has gotten really obvious all of a sudden. But your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. Yeah, he came right out the gates with all his evidence. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person you don't need. Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. Huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second, I guess it's Genocide Jack. Yeah, no. Genocide Jill. Is it me you were hoping to see? What the heck? This is what they decided the name for. Genocide Jill. Okay. Why not Jack? Because that's what she was going under the alias of? I don't know. I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the Back fuck is Jill. this? Okay, yeah. Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one small. <laughs> so intense. Like they say, sound and murderous mind, sound and murderous body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> Jeez, it's like, this is the murderous fiend genocide Jack. This is this is beyond insane. Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, uh, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds. Just kidding. Then it's not true. Of course it's not true. How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid? And another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless. I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Okay, so Monokuma basically guaranteed or confirmed that she is Genocide Jack. Um, in my head I was sitting having the thought flow around that maybe she was still putting this on as an accomplice of Yakuwa so that he could get out. Like no, she was... but she really is because Monokuma just confirmed it. Yeah. Just kidding again. <laughs> We're a really good actor. This should be enough like to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? I do. Yeah, I could never believe a word you say, you monster. I believe her completely. Maybe. She's totally right about that, but something's still bothering me. What she said, I need to get some more details about all of this. 
It's stop the debate. With your argument. Status of the dead body, probably. I go to gas camp, maybe. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? It doesn't match up completely. Give it up. You killed her. Sorry, but I you say that. Perhaps if you had an Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches. No, that's wrong. There you go. Got it. Methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the genocide jack cases and this one. Huh? How's it any different? Uh oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is not no creation of mine. No, no, not at all. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. John. For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Jihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, uh, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right. In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce. Could you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? Yeah, usually the bloodlust was written like right next to the body and not behind it. Right. What was used to suspend her? I got it! Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. Um, well. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, we'll get there, something there. else right. was used to suspend. not really, you know, talking about that specifically. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangements. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac! There's actually one more difference! Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case! They were all male. There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Right, they were all male. I'm gonna figure it out. Because Shahira was her lover. I got it! Is Clearly. It because Shahira was a girl? Bingo, bullseye, right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. And yep, they're all male. 
They were all guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men! <laughs> I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! The hell is wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fangirl! And the mopey side of me just hates it! But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged fan madam! So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill him? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of a one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly car! Lowly car? Ooh, that's gonna set him off. Mr. All High and Mighty. I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! Finally, that someone said it. Does make some amount of sense. What? Whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you use the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school. Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high-class, envy of the entire world scissors! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Okay, she's got a whole bunch of them with her right now. She's fully equipped. That's right, so I can kill anywhere, anytime. Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. You can't, can you? Get her dogs, all of you. Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot. <laughs> so rope's probably out of the question anyway. <laughs> I have no point. idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal, and not some copycat killer or whatever. Actually, hold on. There is one person. We've actually copied the genocide jack cases. <laughs> Would have been you. Here's my answer. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you've already looked through the genocide jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask. When would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Well, for you, it'd be when starting the game. Back <laughs> yeah. Thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. In the locker room, they're suspicious, very suspicious indeed. When you agree, suspicious. Seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Yeah, but how would you have known it was a girl before knowing that it was in there? Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class.